Hey there honey bunnies, as the title of this video suggests these are some thoughts on forgiveness to help people who might be trying to currently undergo a process of forgiveness at the moment or people who might feel as though they need to edge towards a process of forgiveness as part of their healing journey but maybe might be having some difficulty understanding where to start. Um, it's something that I'm asked about over and over again and it's something that I've really avoided talking about explicitly because I know that there are a million different lenses through which you can see the process of forgiveness and it can be a touchy subject and it's difficult to make a video that's general enough to be helpful but at the same time meaningful enough to actually hold weight you know so let's see how we go um, these are some things that I really wanted to say just to start the discussion off and no doubt I will continue to talk a bit more openly about this topic as I go along in the future on my channel I want to begin by saying that every time I've brought up the topic of forgiveness on my YouTube channel or in a Facebook status update in the past I have invariably received some comments from people who take the attitude that forgiveness is essentially judgmentalism that if you are working through a process of forgiveness towards somebody then really what you're doing is you're judging them and that isn't very spiritual and that actually uh, the the idea that you need to forgive somebody is an illusion and that you know once you free yourself from that judgment you'll realize that nobody needs to be forgiven for anything that we're all just human beings having a human experience here and you know none of us really are in a position to forgive anybody else for any transgression and I want to start this video by by saying that if you have that belief and if that belief has served you and if you work very much within that paradigm then I am more than happy for you I think that's amazing I think it's amazing that you figured out a response to forgiveness that works for you I think it's incredible that you feel as though you do not need to forgive anybody for their transgressions towards you um, or even you know maybe you've decided that there is no such thing as a transgression towards you that's fine that's a paradigm that you can choose to work within however I would definitely ask you to reflect refrain from explicitly pushing that argument in the comments section underneath this video and I would ask you to think pretty seriously about the way that you might potentially be making other people feel through saying things like that because although that paradigm works for you and that belief structure is right for you the process of forgiving somebody that has wronged you in some way or abused you in some way or rejected or neglected you is actually a very intrinsic part of the healing journey for a great many people and when you undervalue their desire to go on that journey of forgiveness um, you're making somebody feel as though that process is invalidated in some way or you could be making somebody feel like that it's very important that we don't police people's emotional responses to forgiveness and we don't police people's healing journeys the process of forgiveness once you're on the other side of it can have an incredibly positive effect on your life and I know that for me in my life personally I've had to go through a process of forgiving people certain people in my life that have done me harm and it has definitely been a really potent experience for me and actually I don't feel that forgiveness is uh, tantamount to judgmentalism. I personally feel that actually going through the process of forgiveness is about dropping a lot of the judgment and it's hanging on to that feeling of anger or resentment or righteous indignation which is more in alignment with with being judgmental. So there are different ways to see forgiveness and it completely depends on how you view it. There is no one right way, there is no one right truth when it comes to forgiveness. So if you have very strong opinions about how people should do away with the concept of forgiveness altogether then I would ask you if you would ever consider saying that to somebody's face who is dealing with the aftermath of a sexual assault for example. If somebody that, have, that was going through that told you that they felt they needed to undergo a process of forgiveness and letting go, would you tell them that they were just being judgmental and that there's, there's no need for them to, to go through a process of forgiveness against their transgressor? I would seriously ask you to think about whether or not you would say that to somebody face to face in life and if you wouldn't then maybe refrain from saying it on the internet. If you currently feel that you need to undergo a process of forgiveness towards a person or towards a group of people that you feel have wronged you in some way then it's important to start by recognizing that you are the product of a lot of conditioning and programming around the concept of forgiveness itself so it's important sometimes to go back to your upbringing your adolescence the experiences that you've had so far in your life and have a look at what you've learned about forgiveness what did your parental figures teach you about forgiveness what have you learned about forgiveness as the result of just being on planet for a certain amount of years and having a certain amount of experience experiences. 
it's sometimes really useful to recognise that some of the conditioning that we've experienced regarding forgiveness has not been that helpful to us and that it's okay to let those paradigms go. I know that a lot of people have experienced the concept of forgiveness through a religious framework and other people have experienced the concept of forgiveness through a familial framework which has in the end been a dysfunctional you know experience for them and they've had to kind of reframe how they see forgiveness. One of my parental templates is really really into just like never forgiving anything and holding a grudge until the end of time and you know forgiveness is weakness kind of thing so I've been brought up with a lot of that conditioning and programming and it took me a while to break that down I used to think that there was some kind of pride or some kind of virtue in holding a grudge and in not letting my anger go and not forgiving so that was something that I had to break down and, and process and no doubt for many of you watching this this there will be kind of forms of conditioning that you're aware of that you know that you need to break down and grapple with no one can force you to forgive somebody and nobody should ever police your response Response to a betrayal or a trauma or a form of abuse of any kind um, there will be people throughout your life that will try and push you to forgive somebody and that's really unfortunate consider what functional forgiveness looks like in your opinion what would it look like to forgive somebody in a healthy and functional way um, and, and consider like what kind of a positive effect that would have on your life as well I know for a lot of people the crunch time the moment that they realize that they need to forgive is the moment that they realize that their life is going to look shitty in five years time or ten years time if they don't go through that forgiveness process. There is that whole thing about how holding on to your anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die and I think that beginning a process of forgiveness usually it starts at the moment that you realise that you are drinking that poison and you are expecting the other person to somehow be harmed by that but it's ultimately you that is being consistently harmed by it. However although it's obvious that a process of forgiveness can be really positive for a lot of people and makes sense for a lot of people. It's also important to note that nobody can force you to forgive somebody. Nobody is entitled to police your journey of healing and to tell you that you need to forgive somebody. You might not be able to even conceive of going through a process of forgiveness at this point and that is okay. Forcing somebody to forgive somebody else is really a violent act. Trying to police somebody's response to what they've been through is a psycho-spiritually violent act, you know. If somebody has been through something really difficult at the hands of somebody else, Else, and then those people that come along as supporters are trying to push that person into a process of forgiveness then that is also a wrongdoing that's been leveled against somebody who's already had a wrongdoing leveled against them once you know so it's really important to allow people to just um, do what they've got to do for themselves and bring up the concept of forgiveness themselves if they feel that they can and if they don't it's not something that they should be pleased into or forced into it's not something that should be rammed down their throats in any way I work with a lot of clients who are going through an active process of forgiveness of somebody who has wronged them or betrayed them in some way but I also work with clients who are going through a healing journey where the dialogue around forgiveness hasn't really come up explicitly or indeed you know the client feels as though they could never really conceive of a process of forgiveness for that particular wrong doing and it doesn't mean that the healing journey has stalled in any way it's still very much a healing journey it's still very much a process of acceptance and letting go and releasing what has happened and moving on from it but it doesn't explicitly center around a dialogue of forgiveness because that is not comfortable to that client in particular you know there's a whole range of different ways to heal from something there's far more than one way and just because a dialogue around forgiveness is not explicitly being considered or you know focused on doesn't mean that the healing journey is stalled or that it's not going to work. Um, some people find that the, their process of forgiveness comes years down the line, you know, years after the initial healing has been factored in. Some people don't feel that forgiveness should even be discussed for specific kinds of wrongdoing. And I think it's important to allow people to have their own views. I'm gonna talk about three of the major misconceptions that I tend to come across when it comes to the idea of going through a forgiveness process. A lot of people avoid going through a process of forgiveness because they feel that it absolves the wrongdoer of any blame or responsibility so it lets them off the hook essentially. Uh, they feel that it is a sign of superiority to forgive somebody or they feel that forgiveness automatically needs to go hand in hand with reconciliation and all of those things are untrue. In fact a very healthy forgiveness process can take place without even factoring the other person in. You can forgive somebody who hasn't even apologised to you, who doesn't even it isn't even sorry, who doesn't even recognise that they've done any wrongdoing. You can absolutely go through a process of forgiveness um, towards that person 
for you and because you need to move on. It doesn't even matter what the other person thinks. You still need to process that stuff and you still need to forgive from your place and from your consciousness. Just because you forgive somebody does not mean that you need to reconcile with them. It does not mean that you need to factor them back into your life or start picking up the phone to them again. But unfortunately, you are gonna come across people in your life who very much do equate forgiveness with reconciliation. I know that for my part, I do not equate forgiveness with reconciliation. I don't feel that just because I've completely forgiven somebody, it means that they need to be allowed a key back into my life again. But I have definitely come across people in my life, in my family or in my friendship group, who insist that I have not forgiven fully because I will not fully reconcile with the person and start seeing them again. And that is definitely two different ways of looking at forgiveness. I see forgiveness as being far more than reconciliation. I think reconciliation can happen in some cases, but I don't feel it needs to happen in every case, nor do I feel it should happen in every case. Sometimes in order for forgiveness to be functional, it needs to involve a complete severing. And I know that in my case, you know, I have forgiven people and yet still completely severed from them, but I wish them well and I've healed completely. But that to other people seems very lopsided and they find it difficult to get on board with that. But you know what? It's not for anybody else to get on board with your decision. It is for you to get on board with what forgiveness means for you. And if it doesn't include reconciliation, then that is okay. That is totally and utterly permitted. The other thing, the second thing, that I think comes up a lot when people really rile against the idea of starting up a process of forgiveness is the concept of superiority. The idea that if you are working to forgive somebody, then it means that you are superior to them. And that's absolutely not the case in any way. In fact, you can be actively working to forgive somebody in one situation, but then in another situation, you can very much be asking for forgiveness from somebody or trying to forgive yourself for something shitty that you did or for a mistake that you made. Working through a process of forgiveness towards somebody for something doesn't mean that you think that you are beyond blame. It doesn't mean that you think you are without fault. You can be working through many different processes at the same time regarding different situations. And in some of them, you will be the person that needs to give forgiveness. And in others, you will be the person that needs to ask for it or seek it within yourself. That third misconception about absolving the wrongdoer of blame, I think that's got a lot to do again with that idea of drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. We feel that when we hang on to our anger, our bitterness, our resentment, we are ultimately holding the wrongdoer accountable. We are saying that they are wrong and our anger is a symbol, it is a representation of the fact that that other person is wrong and has wronged us. But actually, who is that harming? It's very, very rarely harming the wrongdoer sometimes the wrongdoer may wish to come back into our lives and it might harm them that we're not forgiving them. But nine times out of 10, holding onto your anger, holding onto your bitterness, that's harming you. You're the person drinking the poison. It's not affecting the wrongdoer at all. So you're not letting the wrongdoer off the hook. They still have to take responsibility for what they did. They still have to take ownership and they still have to work through that. But when you forgive them and let that shit go, what you are basically saying is that it is not up to you to do their work for them, okay? You can not burn their karma for them. You need to come back to you and what's going on in your life and you need to be able to move on and you deserve to be able to move on. So essentially I think that last misconception about forgiveness being tantamount to absolving somebody is probably the most pernicious and definitely the most widespread. I hung on to anger, I hung on to full-on fucking rage for a long time because I felt that forgiveness was weakness, I felt that forgiving somebody was absolving them of their responsibility, it was saying that I never really believed that they did me wrong and that would be a, you know a mistruth so I definitely hung on to my anger for a long time and avoided the process of forgiveness for that reason and I'm really glad that I moved on from that misconception and saw it for what it was my life has been a lot happier since that point forgiveness is not a flick on flick off light switch it's more of a dimmer switch situation and I know I've addressed this in videos in the past and I've certainly addressed this in private courses that I've done and stuff as well um, I speak about this with my clients one-on-one -on -one a lot the fact that forgiveness does come in degrees. It is something that, you know, ebbs and flows. It's something where you can lose quite a lot of ground because of a trigger that comes up. So you could feel like you are very far in your journey of forgiveness and then something could come along that kind of triggers you and takes you back a few steps. And then you need to 
you know, rebuild and move the forgiveness up again a few degrees. It's definitely true that forgiveness is not something that instantaneously can just come into your life at a given moment, although that can happen. It's definitely true that some people have just found that there has been a moment of, of transpersonal illumination, a breaking, a breaking through, if you like, where they have recognised that they can just let that shit go and, and, you know, send that person love. But a lot of the time, most of the time, it doesn't happen like that. The forgiveness process is a conscious process that you take yourself through and it's not something that happens overnight and it is something where sometimes you lose a little bit of ground or gain a little bit of ground before you come to something more full and more sturdy that really feels like the process of forgiveness has reached its conclusion. Holding on to anger and refusing to forgive somebody that's wronged you is definitely tantamount to holding on to emotions and thoughts that are not serving your well-being. They're not serving your physical, emotional, mental or spiritual well-being and sometimes when we agree to go through that process of forgiveness we are agreeing to recognize that we're agreeing to recognize that we're not doing anything good for ourselves and that hanging on to the anger and refusing to forgive and accept and let go um, is definitely kind of causing more harm than it is good like I mentioned earlier in this video I do work with clients um, that are going through a healing process um, due to being wronged by somebody and yet forgiveness doesn't come into the dialogue very much forgiveness doesn't seem to be the right word for that specific client and you'll find that in your personal life as well I find that with friends of mine that I'm counseling through things some friends do want to talk specifically about forgiveness and about really coming to a point of being able to forgive somebody whereas other friends don't want to talk about that it's not really relevant it's not how they're feeling and what they're going through and I just want to say that forgiveness can definitely be it can mean different things to different people and forgiveness is something that I think can be um, it is kind of subjective it is dependent upon the person's way of viewing it I very very rarely speak to somebody who's been through a process of forgiveness who concedes that the person that they forgave did no wrong okay that's not what forgiveness is really about forgiveness is about tolerance of somebody else it's about pity it's about mercy in a way forgiveness is about recognizing that we're all human we're all fallible we all fail we all fuck up forgiveness is about refusing to keep allowing yourself to be eaten alive by the anger that you feel towards somebody else and forgiveness like i said it's normally much more about us than it is about the person that wronged us it's about us like taking our energy back and reinvesting it into ourselves and our journeys um, but forgiveness is, is very rarely about you know looking at what someone's done and saying hey you know what that wasn't wrong you didn't do anything wrong it's fine here's a really interesting simple definition for forgive to stop feeling anger towards someone who's done something wrong to stop blaming someone and to stop requiring payment for something that's owed I think one of the most important things about the power of the forgiveness process is that second thing, to stop blaming somebody. Um, I think that if I hadn't have gone through a couple of the key forgiveness processes that I have gone through in my life, I would definitely still be blaming those people for a myriad of things. I would have taken the initial wrongdoing that was done towards me and I would have used that as leverage, I would have used that as currency to get myself off the hook for a whole bunch of different things, bad attitudes, crappy habits, mistakes that I made along the way. When we look back at something that somebody did to us and we see it as a symbol of things that have gone wrong in our lives since then, trust that was broken, you know, a complete shift on our outlook towards the negative, then if we continue to blame that person, then we also use that person as an excuse. We use that person as an excuse not to change. We use that person as an excuse not to get better. So I think dropping blame and, you know, the forgiveness process being equated with refusing to blame somebody anymore, I think that's one of the most magnificent parts of the process for me and one of the most important parts of the process for me. I think a lot of what I'm trying to say in this video is that the forgiveness process is about you much more than it is about the other person and you can very much accept an apology that you were never given and you can definitely forgive somebody who's not sorry and sometimes that is a very very important part of the healing journey it is for a great many people it has been for me you cannot forgive under duress you cannot forgive because you are being pleased into forgiveness it's got to come from you and like I said the healing journey doesn't explicitly have to focus on that it's really about you and what's going on in your personal journey and I would say don't let anybody take that away from you you. Don't let anybody make you feel as though it's out of your hands and as though you need to be told how to, um, how to respond to somebody that's wronged you. Um, but it's about your timeline, it's about what makes sense for you and it's about the kind of language that makes sense for you. Forgiveness doesn't make sense to everybody. 
forgiveness doesn't feel like something that everybody can stomach it's not palatable to everybody and that doesn't necessarily mean that it's because they need to go through that process um, healing can take many different forms and like I said some people do go through the process of healing from a wrongdoing and then like years down the line they realize that they do want to actually go through a personal process of forgiving that person um, at heart level for doing whatever they did so it can roll around like that but it's really important not to allow your specific experience to be pleased nobody should do that to you and the most important thing is that you want to heal whatever form that's going to take for you just desiring to heal is the most important thing and find people that will hold space for you as you do that rather than trying to please the language that you use or the particular road that you take to reach that healing okay i hope this has been helpful so much love until next time darlings blessed be